How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood and welcome back to Learning Game Maker Studio 2. In this episode we're going to take a look at Particle Designer, uh, current version 2.5.3, but they are working on version 3 which looks really awesome. I'm going to put a link in the description below to where you can go to download version 2 and older versions as well as check out the new version 3 which will be in beta sometime this year 2017. So what is Particle Designer? Well it's a it's a standalone application that uh, kind of bundles well with a lot of game making uh, software. Um, in particular, Game Maker Studio and Game Maker Studio 2. Um, and basically, what it does is it lets you simulate and create particle effects without actually having to code them yourself and type. I mean, you're still going to be designing them and changing values and stuff to get the, the effect you, you want. But what's so cool about it also, it has like a lot of randomized options, which saves a lot of time in the long run. Instead of having to fill out all these with random numbers and then see what happens, you can just go to options and do full random and it randomizes everything and it gives you some other particle effect, which you could figure out what uses it could be used for. You can manipulate the numbers more to get a different thing. Let's just try some out. So these are all like little tiny spark flints. But look at that one. <clears throat> it's pretty crazy. And you're thinking, oh, well, it's only going to go from the center to the left. What if I want it to go to the right? Well, we can change the direction. So let's change the direction to 0 to 359. Yeah, 359. Because how the direction works is uh, basically 0 is to the right, and then it goes counterclockwise. So 180 would make things go to the left. But as I'm clicking and holding in the center, you can see that they're all wiggling out like that now. So we just got this particle effect. Let's test a little bit more and see what we can get. It looks like a little electric shock. That actually looks pretty cool. Um, let's do a few more just to see what we can get. Some sort of like, I don't know what that is, but you can imagine if you're making like an RPG game or something, you can create all kinds of cool art effects without actually making the art yourself. Look at that big explosion effect right there. So this is an awesome tool, but it is kind of hard to use at first because you're like, well, how do I get, I made this perfect animation. How do I put it into my game? How do I call it in my game? Uh, well, let's do that. Let's go through the process of how you would go about doing that. Let's find something we want to put in our game like that. It looks awesome. Wow. Super cool. Let's go ahead and give it a 360 direction though. Let's go 0 to 359. That way it'll just span out like in a, yeah, wow, that looks crazy. Okay, so what we're going to do is click export, and then we're going to say entire system GML if you're using um, Game Maker. Well, this is for Game Maker Studio 2, so we're going to export to GML. Now, there are plenty of other particle effect designers that, uh, like programs, applications, that you can export directly to a uh, .yyp file. Uh, and it, but for this version, it's only for Game Maker One. So how do we put that in Game Maker Two? Well, all the processes and every all the coding is all the same, pretty much. So we're going to export this file as a GML file. So we have to think of a name for it. I'm going to call it like a Wide Aura. I don't know. We'll do underscores just so we keep it one Aura, Wide Aura. Okay, and we'll save it. And remember where you saved it, because we're going to need to load that file. So it saves it as uh, a GML file, which we can't really load directly, or maybe we can into uh, you know, a Game Maker Studio 2. But what I what I like to do, I'll just go through my process. Is I like to load it up into like Notepad Notepad plus plus or in my version Subl uh, Sublime. Uh, but anyway, we open that file because we want to look at the code and what do we call it? Uh, wide Aura. So let's open that. Now we've got this stuff to find the script particle. We're basically going to put this into a script. But we also want to rename it and everything. We're not going to use any emitters. You can go further with it and, and make emitters with it. But we're just looking at this chunk of code right here. The code that creates that, that particular particle effect that we can call as many or as few times as we want. So we're going to copy that main chunk of code. Copy that. Uh, now what we're going to do is put this in... Uh, put, go ahead and minimize that. <clears throat> we're going to have to create a particle system. But anyway... Um, I've already done that because it's going to be super long, but we'll, I'll walk through it a little bit. So is this the right game? No, I have the wrong game open. Let's go ahead and open up my other game. That was my space shooter game. This is the one I'm working on now. And that would explain why I can't find So I've got my particle systems open here, and you can see I've already added some other uh, you know, things to them. Now I've made two particle systems. You don't need multiple particle systems, but you probably want to have them. 
uh, because they're going to contain all of the particle effects and you need to call a system and, and destroy a system. Uh, I've done another tutorial on particle systems, on basic particle systems, so a lot of this will be uh, repeating some of the process. So I'm going to go through a little bit quickly, look at my last couple of tutorials, you'll find it. Easy particle stuff. Um, so anyway, um, what we're going to do is take this code and paste it at the bottom of our create event for our object, for our particle. So create a new object, make it persistent, uh, and then at the top of it, we're going to do uh, a line of code right here. Uh, we're going to name, we're going to create a variable inside this object, call it whatever you want, particle system one. Set it to this value of part system create layer with underscores right there. Open up uh, parentheses and quotations and put it, type in the name of the layer that you want the particles to appear on. So if your player is going to be on the instance layer, then you want your particles to appear above it. You need to make sure you have another instance layer on top of that. So I've got top particle layer right there. So I'm putting that uh, word in there verbatim. So I want it to appear on that layer above everything. We're going to put a comma. We're going to put true because we're making this a persistent system. That way we can load it into the memory one time and then it'll be on like on the first map. And then we don't actually have to load this system at all anymore until the game ends and the particle system becomes destroyed. So, um, yeah, that's it for that, basically. Um, then we just put in however many particles we want. So let's get to doing that. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, and I've got two of them here, one for the top and one for below players, but we're just going to do it to, to uh, the top layer right here. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. Boom, we paste that line of code. Now what we want to do is replace all instances of particle 1 with another name. What did I, I called it Wide Aura. So I'm going to highlight that name, I'm going to press Control F, and then I'm going to click on where it should be, then we press on the down arrow, and now we have Replace. So now we're going to replace all of those instances with Wide uh, Aura. And I just do camel case for that. Why not? <clears throat> so then we'll hit, we'll hit this little arrow right there. It's going to replace. And you can see it's going down. And it's replacing all the particle ones with wide aura. Trust me, control F and then that little down arrow. It's going to save you a lot of time when you want to replace a bunch of uh, code. And you can see it didn't switch to blue yet, but it will. Um, so just give it a second and it will update and recognize that as a new uh, variable. Now, whenever we create a new particle type, we actually have to destroy that particle type as well as the system that it's in. So we're adding an event, we're adding a game end, and we're going to destroy all the particle systems. So we're going to say part underscore system underscore destroy, and we're going to put the name of the thing we put at the very top. Right? Remember, we created a temporary name, particle system one or whatever. Copy paste that name, put it in this uh, parentheses. We really need to destroy this, otherwise you're going to have memory leaks. Now we also have to do part type destroy. Uh, to, to get rid of all the particle types that we created. So what we want to do here is basically copy this line of code for the next particle system that we just created, or the particle type that we created, which I called Wide Aura. All right? So boom. And you'll see that if, if you spell it out, it'll autofill and, and pick up the, you know, so it helps you. Uh, really, really good engine. Game Maker Studio 2. So we've got that added to a particle system. Now what we want to do is make a script call uh, so we can basically call this uh, particle system. So we basically take this object, we go to like our title screen, we go to resources, we drag it and we drop it in right there. We make sure that it's loading in here before uh, you ca you might have to move it around to make sure that it loads. Uh, if it crashes because it's accessing trying to access a, a variable that can't be loaded yet, but it's already there, just try moving your instance prot layers around uh, and then uh, your objects so you can get the... A certain things to, to load in whatever order you want. You could also do creation code on the map to manipulate that further. Um, okay, so we've got our particle system one, our particle systems set up. Um, now we need to do a script call for it. So what we want to do is create a new script and uh, basically I'm just going to duplicate the ones and uh, go through it quickly to save some time for you guys. So as soon as it wants to open here Open properties, thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do here is do three lines it's, and then we're going to put in the name of the script. Whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to rename it to, uh, I mean, I don't even know why I affix these with DG just because I was trying to create some convention, but it doesn't make any sense. I'll probably change it. So whatever conventions you want to use, uh, I'm just going to call this one Wide Aura, like that camel case, that, uh, just like the rest. Well, RGB tunnel is a camel case, but whatever. Uh, so then we need to change this out right here to the to what we're putting in wide aura, 
and that's really not necessary but this is going to help you figure out if you forget what arguments you're going to put inside because recall this is a script and you have to pass in variables to it so this is going to let us know that we're looking for an x and a y location so we're going to create two temporary variables we're going to say var xx equals argument zero it'll turn green when it recognizes you spelled it right var yy equals argument one then we're going to do part underscore particles underscore create now what we want to do is type in the name of the particle system that we're using so the object uh, whatever you called your object for that particle system that we dragged into the to the room and made persistent that thing you type that out then you put a dot and when you do this you're saying we want to reference a variable that's stored inside of this object so we're gonna type in the name that we chose for the uh, for the step uh, on that particle system I want to go to it real quick so on particle system 2 we've chose uh, to call this uh, DG part system one remember what the part system create layer so we need to reference that so we're referencing this system inside of this object so cool let's go ahead and go down to that so we're referencing that system right here inside of this object then we put a comma that's the first thing uh, so we need to put an X and a Y a part type and a and the number of particles we want to call so we're going to say xx because this isn't a static value. This is a number that's going to, that's going to change depending on our x and our y, whatever we pass into it. <clears throat> so xx and yy to say use argument zero and argument one for these two spots for where you want to place the particles. Then we need to call that same thing again, uh, the same object, and but now we're referencing a particle type. So this is the whatever we called it, and in this one we called it uh, dot. Uh, wide aura <clears throat> and how many do we want to put let's just say six I don't know this is the the last number is how many particles do you want to create you want to burst a number of particles how many do you want to burst at the same time you can put as many as you want but you want to keep it as little as you possibly need to create the effect that you're going for um, and you might need to mess with that number a little bit so cool that's our script call very simple right very very easy thing to do there um, but we do need Let's see. With this, we're calling part particles create. So that's like a simpler, uh, simplified version of doing it. No emitters or anything right there. Okay, so once we've got our system and we've got our particle type in there, um, <clears throat> we need to actually call this script call. So how do we call that script call? Well. All we have to do is figure out when we want it to happen and then we put in that script call. So let's actually do a simple thing. Let's do uh, see if we're pressing a button to make it call, right? So we're going to say if uh, keyboard check. We'll just say keyboard check that way we don't have, it'll just keep spamming it if we hold it. And we only need to do one thing so we don't actually need those braces. So we'll say VK, uh, I don't know, what are we going to put in? VK uh, control, no, let's do, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, let's just say uh, backspace. Okay, so if we're pressing backspace, then we want to instance, wait, are we actually creating an object? We don't actually need to create an object. Well, we can basically, since we're doing this on the step, it's going to uh, up check this every frame. So if we're holding it, it's going to keep going. So we can just call the script call right here, just to do it simply. DG underscore wide or I'm gonna change my naming convention on that because it doesn't make sense to just reference that as it. Uh, okay anyway but we need to pass some variables uh, into it so uh, remember when we put that little bit of coding at the uh, on the this thing so it should fill in right here with what we what it needs it should say looking for an X and a Y we're gonna just say X and Y but it should have uh, auto filled why did it not do that DG wide aura. Either way, it should work. So if we're now if we're pressing backspace, then it should play that. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> let's jump into the game and see if if we got that right. Might be bugs. Might crash. We'll see. So this is the particle effect in action. It's doing the same thing. I'm running particle effects as my character moves around right here. Also, when I collide with one of these things, I'm calling uh, the script to run a particle effect. When we enter here, it switches to a different kind of thing. And if we press uh, left click, we shoot a, an object that's creating script calls with an alarm so it doesn't spam super fast. It's actually doing three 
uh, particle effects that you can do at the same time. So if I press it once, it creates a particle effect of those white glowy dust thingies. This is for something else, but I'm just showing you, like, if you repeat this process, you can combine them and get all kinds of crazy effects. Um, it also does a little blue bubbles, uh, and then it also does, like, that little wavy thing. And then if we right-click, we have this also got this little thing for star power. So if we get the star power, right, we got that going on for 10 seconds. And after which uh, 10 seconds will happen, uh, it'll wear off and those particle effects will stop. But if we hit the star again, oh, almost missed it. Uh, then we get star power again. Whatever you want it to do is up to you. We'll get into doing more effects like how to trigger stuff uh, later on. But uh, simply now let's test the effect that we made uh, we just created right now because this is about using particle designer and I'm just giving you some stuff that you could do with it so if I press backspace whoa 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 so if if I press it uh, every frame because I didn't do I didn't do keyboard check press which would mean it would play it once and I'd have and I'd have to keep spamming backspace like that to make it work if I just hold it BAM it's just gonna keep spraying those BAM BAM Bam, 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 bam. Now that's just crazy overboard. You do not need all that. I just did it really quickly to give you uh, something noticeable and an illustration like boom, 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 boom. So yeah, Particle Designer is super cool, guys. You guys should check it out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, that's pretty much it. If, if things aren't working right, make sure that your instance order is set up right. Make sure you've dragged your objects onto the map. Make sure if it's the particle system, you've made it persistent and put it on the first map. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I'm sure I could show you the star power thing next, but this tutorial was just about uh, showing you particle designer. We can just create another full random. You saw how I went about creating uh, that code, right? Wasn't too hard. Uh, uh, and not even creating the co not so much code. It's just like where do you put it and how do you place it and how do you call it? You know, so uh, pretty simple uh, Mess around with it. Check it out links are in the description for this thing Hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial if you would like to see more Please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're new here I've got lots of RPG maker envy tutorials. I got game maker studio to tutorials I do first impressions videos on games if you're working on your games, so I do like uh, QA beta testing, you know what I mean for uh, just to give you some ideas on what uh, you might want to add to your game or bugs that uh, help you find bugs in the game. So yeah, if you have a game you would like uh, somebody to put some eyes on it and just give it a little bit of uh, light, you'll get, I don't know, hundreds to maybe a few thousand views uh, and some feedback, a lot of feedback, which is uh, helpful to a lot of people. So let me know. Uh, join the Discord. Uh, that's where I accept my games. You just send me a message in Discord so I know who you are. Uh, there's a few hundred people there, but usually about 80, 90, 100 people online. Love to have you in the Discord. That's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.